We're in the kitchen, though. Uh, Jamie Oliver is back uh, with uh, uh, ideas to make your Christmas cooking easier. He's making a festive sweet treat for us now. Yeah. So we just uh, showed that amazing. tray bake, that kind of sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. That's one option. But this is like the same tray, and this is how versatile it is, because you yeah. can do this option. Yeah, if you flick through the book, you'll see loads of different one-panel, one-tray recipes. Yeah. These are bang-and-go style things, undeniable flavours. And, you know, any time of year, mm. but particularly at Christmas, when some people do or don't like the heaviness of Christmas pudding, you know, I love all of that, or trifle, love all of that, but around the time or Christmas Day, this can fit in. Like, mm. we've got spice, we've got the ginger, we've got the chocolate, we've got pears. Um, if, I'm lovely honest, if I'm honest, I'd rather have this. Really? Mm. I like a Christmas pudding, but we can have both. It's Christmas. Yeah, you can have a bit of everything. Mm. Yeah, my mum does that. She does a little bit a little of everything. Bit of everything. Um, so I just thought I'd take this opportunity. Obviously, the brief of this book was utter simplicity, uh, one pan or one tray. And in this, I just want to just, as far as my funny little brain, mm -hmm. when I'm writing recipes for the last twenty years, I think it's because of my dyslexia, but I don't like odd numbers. I really like round numbers. So what you'll start to see is this pattern throughout my books, and I think it helps you. Mm. So four eggs have gone in. But then we're just going to load it. So 200 grams of self-raising flour. Yep. Guess how much ground 200. almonds? 200. And then guess how much um, olive oil? 200. Yeah, there you go. And guess how much sugar? 200. So that, I, I, I like that. Now, olive oil instead of butter, interesting. You get that a lot in the Mediterranean. It gives you a lighter, spongier mm. dessert. Hopefully you feel that that's yep. very squashy and spongy. It is. Yep. And delicious. So now we have this opportunity to give it lift. A teaspoon of baking powder will give you this. And that will give it the raise. Then 100 grams of... Ginger. Ginger. In every supermarket, you can get the gorgeous mm. sort of glacé ginger in jars with syrup. Just chop it up, do any size you want. And then a little kiss of chopped chocolate. Um, about 50 grams goes in. So you can kind of put a little bit of, I don't know, clementine in there if you want. Mm. You can put a little bit of nutmeg in there, cinnamon. But that's the basic recipe and it works beautifully. Mix it up, get the kids involved, get anyone involved, and it's a mix and go recipe. So over here, I've got a 20 centimetre, centimetre by 30 centimetre standard tray. Yeah. Get yourself some grease proof, scrunch it up, put it in a tap so it's nice and malleable, rub it with some olive oil, and then what we can do is do this lovely tray bake. Now, at this time of year, everyone, I am aware that you're all really busy. There's a lot of stress, even in a, in, in a household that's organised, right? Yeah. Um, you can make this the day before. Mm -hmm. You can put it in the fridge and you can then put it in the oven. And that's when... Would, the... you, would you oven it the day before or get it to this no, stage? No, I'd, I'd keep it as a batter because hopefully what you agree is nice about this is yeah. it's soft and, and, and Well, you spongy. keep talking about how simple it is, but yeah. it's a very complex taste. Do you know what I mean? There is so much going on, so yep. much spicing and warmth and yep. loveliness. But, Holly, that's, I fight for that when I'm writing the recipes because, you know, a lot of that warmth comes from the ginger. So yeah. ginger gives us fragrance, it gives us that kind of hugginess, it gives us a pepperiness, doesn't it, that's mm. so good. Mm. And that actual um, product that you get in all the supermarkets, which is in syrup, is just genius, right? We, we, we love it. Mm -hmm. So you can choose a fruit, you could use quince, you could use apple. I'm using tinned pears. Right, these are humble ingredients. By the way, this is coming in at 43 pence a portion when I costed it today. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it's good old-fashioned gorgeousness. You can line up the peppers and be really kind of uniform like soldiers if you want. You can pick them up and you can do that Dollop. if you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? But tin pears, genius. Peaches if you fancy. I like tin pears. Mix it up if you want. They're really lovely. It's really nice. And it's really nice. Childhood reminder. Half an hour, yeah. 180. 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit. Is it hard when you're have... writing recipes when people's ovens are also different? Because my oven cooks really fast. Yep. We were just having this discussion. Yours yep. is mine... from a higher temperature than mine. Yep. It's, like, confusing. Yeah. Th th this cookbook business is really serious because uh, we test everything in different size mm. pans, thickness pans, brand pans, different brand ovens, old ones, new ones. And then we sort of take... I always do the master edit once all the comments from the testers come in. But basically, they're all different. So I have to use wording... You know, so half an hour at 180 or until it's golden and crisp so and it's know, doubled yeah. in size. So you can use emotional words to help the consumer as well. Now, look, we have this lovely tray bake. The residual we'll heat... That. Where did I put that? I just... I didn't what put do that. you need? No, it's over here. The residual heat of this tray, because it's one pan or one tray, right? Mm -hmm. I've put this chocolate in this hot tray and I've put the syrup, right, from the pears in there. Oh, that's And just so heat it up. Smart. And what this creates is the most amazing, simple sort of chocolate and pear sauce that you can basically do a Jackson Pollock or whatever you want to call it <laughs> and, and do all of that business. 
But that allows us then to have a lovely tray bake. Mm. We can go and slice it up, have it with creme fraiche, have it with... Oh, that's not a knife. <laughs> uh, have it... <laughs> you might want a fork with it. Uh, have it with creme fraiche. You're having it with ice cream. Mm -hmm. You could have it with bird cut... Oh, I shouldn't say bird custard, but I just oh, did. Sorry, I don't work for them. <laughs> <laughs> I just slipped like out. Um, so uh, your creme fraiche there, has that got grated um, orange or clementine or something? Yes. Like? So I'm so glad you picked up on that. When you're serving things like just that, that little ke Christmas's care, and most of us have got a clementine around, so a little grating of that into your roasted carrots, Christmas. A little bit on your creme fraiche, you know, with a lovely little pudding, Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like, you know, with the first dish that we did today, which was the chestnuts and the sage and the onion, these are all little kind of things that give us that feeling of Christmas. Um, when you were putting mine on, a, on the plate earlier on, um, I, there was like a jar of ginger juice. What was the ginger juice that you put on that? So that, that was that, was that the, the crystallised ginger yeah. and that's just the, so, the yeah. juice that's left over? So I, look, I've taken it out of the, um, the jar because I'm not supposed to mention brands, which <laughs> clearly I've got a problem. But that's what you get. It's in all the supermarkets. And it was the juice that was left yes. over once you take taken those out. And it's that that I'm pouring over now and it's got that heat and sweetness. And really, as a product, you can use that in sweet and savoury dishes. That's so good for you. It's really good for you. Yeah, um, while you're here, bit of cheese. before you oh, go, yeah, because little, lots of little, people oh, sorry, go asking about, um, obviously, a sort of traditional cooking Christmas thing, Dina has said, should you always parboil your potatoes before you roast them? Mm. Absolutely. Sorry, I just ate that because I couldn't <laughs> stop myself. Um, parboil, um, Maris Piper, yeah. King Edwards, 12 minutes, salted boiling water, drain it, let it steam, in the colander, give it a good chuffing up. That means when you sort of rough up the Lock outside. Up. Then you choose your fat. Olive oil, goose fat, butter or a blend, herbs, bit of garlic. Now, little tip. You can do that the day before. Yeah. The minute you've parboiled it and dressed it in fat, you can just cover it uncooked, right, and put it in the garage. Really? Put it in the fridge. And then when the turkey comes out or your roasting joint and you rest it, hour and a half, two hours at least, rest it, it's still cooking, right? When the turkey comes out of the oven, the temperature doesn't go down internally, it goes up. Put a th test it. Carry over cooking, resting. All the juices go back to where they should be. Yeah. That golden two hours is when you take your roast potatoes and bang them in the oven. Mm -hmm. And that's your golden two hours to do your greens, your, all your other rattans bits. and all the other bits and pieces. Well, how should okay. you um, season a turkey, says Jake? Uh, you can season the turkey <laughs> with just salt and pepper, olive oil. Rub it with butter. You can take accents of Christmas, like nutmeg. You can use herbs on the skin, under the skin. Uh, you can take little bits of clementine and tiny bits of spice, like chilli, chopped rosemary, get it under the skin. Mm. You can go as simple or as complex as you want. Uh, there's no, really no rules, um, but just use common sense and, yeah. and your humour and your personality and let it come out. Enjoy it. Have a lovely Christmas. Yeah, Jim. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Your it's always a pleasure to well. be here. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, for details of today's recipe and the one we did earlier, and more delicious ideas <laughs> from our chefs, download our free this morning.